And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is a Wednesday hump day. It means we're closer to the weekend, and I'm closer to going to the Houston Rodeo this weekend. It's, uh, it started last night. Parker McCollum uh, in front of 70,000 fans playing a show last night at NRG down here. And, of course, this weekend we'll be out there doing some coverage for the Zach Brown Band on a Sunday, March the 5th, and looking forward to that big uh, concert there. And, of course, we're always live on the YouTube channel and uh, also at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. Uh, uh, presented by our friends over at uh, Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, bangtail.com or uh, easyliquor.com. You get that bottle sent directly to your door. Also, our friends at Honky Tonk Texas and also Gentle Ben Spirits out there. The vodka, uh, the gin, the bourbon is fantastic. And all presenting sponsors of uh, CRS 2023, March 13 to 15 at the Omni Hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. We'll be there broadcasting live and uh, meeting a bunch of people, having a, a great, great time out there. Pleased to welcome in my featured artist of the day. I love her music. I love this single called Petty in the 80s. It came out uh, February 17th as Carly Scott Collins joins us here on the Backstage Pass. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I feel like that's just a mouthful right there before I can get to the introduction, but we did <laughs> <laughs> what we got to do to put all that out there and pay the bills and do all that kind of stuff and appreciate what our sponsors do. Well, hey, tell me about yourself because I love every artist, every everybody that comes on this show, talks about their journey. Uh, your hometown, Lake City, Florida. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like you grew up playing a guitar, which led you to Nashville to chase this dream. Tell me all about it here because I'd love to hear just every word. I know you started writing at a young age and I want to say your dad was, was jamming out to Guns N' Roses. It started there. Yeah, actually. Well, I mean, I, my family in Lake city kind of raised me loving music. Um, my Nana really loved classic country music. My dad did love, or still does really love like Guns N' Roses and Alice in Chains and Pantera and stuff like that. So I grew up loving music, but kind of actually becoming a musician myself was kind of a roundabout thing a little bit um so i actually started acting when i was younger um so i was an actress from like six to eleven and um the reason i picked up a guitar is because of that because i had like gotten down to like the final two girls on this movie and they mm -hmm. were like well you're gonna have to learn how to play guitar and um <laughs> so, <laughs> so um so I ended up renting a guitar and I took guitar lessons from a guy at uh, the top of Topanga Canyon, like outside, like overlooking all of LA. Mm -hmm. And the first song I ever learned was a Queens of the Stone Age song, actually. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I still <laughs> love them too, by the way. Um, and so I kind of like fell in love with it and ended up deciding that that was what I wanted to do more of. And I moved back home when I was like 11, started writing songs then. Um, and just kind of decided that I didn't ever want to stop doing it. Um, and so I took, started taking trips to Nashville for the first time when I was probably 18, maybe 19, meeting mm -hmm. people. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how it started. Talk about uh, practicing those chords and, and, and picking up the instrument. I want to dive into a little bit more on that side of things as a teenager and, and per performing songs that I know you, you created for your parents, things like that, self-taught. Uh, yeah. I mean, just all these things, pretty cool to pick up an instrument and, you know, put your own personal touch. And then also songs you grew up listening to, to kind of, uh, put that feel out there and learning the guitar, the chords. So walk me through that process a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I started taking lessons when I was young. Of course I had the teacher that taught me the basics. Um, and I think for me, like once I had learned the basics, I've always just kind of heard in my head where I want things to go. It always kind of starts with the melody, I think for me. Um, and so it kind of became after I was moved back to Florida and wasn't taking lessons from him anymore, kind of just figuring out what chord was going to fit the melody that I had in my head. And so, yeah, I did teach myself a lot, a lot of trial and error, just kind of figuring things out and feeling out what works here and there. Um, but I've always really, I've always really enjoyed it. Yeah. I love that too. And I love the fact you've got this great single out called Petty in the eighties. It came out there February uh, 17th, right around there, which is always fun to put new music out and just draw fans, more fans in there, newer fans. And of course, existing uh, fans that are out there. Let's kind of talk about this and we'll have you play it. Uh, the yeah. idea behind it, the writing, kind of the whole story with, with Petty in the eighties. Yeah. So um, I wrote it with some friends of mine, Brock Berryhill and Josh Miller. Um, Brock is one of my closest friends in Nashville, and he was actually one of my very first rights in town, probably like first 10 rights that I had in town. So him and I have been friends for a while. Um, and so the 
I've loved Tom Petty since I was a kid. And when we had our first write, you know, you kind of like get to know each other and talk. And Brock and I bonded over classic rock music. That was kind of like when we were like, oh, we get each other. And he um, he kind of just understands what I like. So when we um, we all got together to write that day, Brock was like, oh, I've got a title you're really going to like. It's called Petty in the 80s because he mm-hmm. knew I loved Tom Petty. And um, he was like, we can say free fall and like Petty in the 80s. And I I am not really the type of person to just free fall, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I want to figure <laughs> out exactly what's going to happen when. Um, and so that's what the song's about, I guess, is kind of like letting that go a little bit and not having to control everything all the time and not thinking through like, how's this going to go wrong? When's it going to go wrong? And just kind of enjoying something. Um, and it was, we wrote it really fast, had a good time writing it. And yeah, that's the song. Good ones come together. Like there's no tomorrow. It comes together pretty quick. I, I'll tell you what time to turn it over to you. We'll, uh, we'll play it. Now we say we lead off with that one. Uh, the single right. from, uh, Carly Scott Collins, uh, Petty in the eighties and Carly, it's all yours. All right. Let me just make sure everything's. Love that song in the 80s from Carly. You can check her out at that very website, www.carlyscottcollins.com, and find out more out there too. And of course, get the single across all the digital platforms. Uh, definitely want to get into a lot of the other singles you guys have released over your career and talk about what's coming up here in 2023. I know there's a lot of plans out there for uh, the new year, a lot of goals and ambitions musically, and of course, personally, things like that. Uh, we'll get to that after we do a quick timeout for our CRS sponsors, uh, Bank Till Whiskey, our friends over at Gentle Ben Spirits, and of course, Honky Talk Texas, presenting sponsors CRS 2023 live at the Omni Hotel, March 13 to 15, with a great, great list 
of interviews and artists that will be joining myself, Kirsty Krause, and C.J. Carton. Here on the Backstage Pass, we'll take that quick time out. More with Carly here on the show. Hang tight. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Back on the show again, Carly Scott Collins joining us here on the uh, backstage pass again, powered by the Sports Guys uh, Podcast.com. We'll be there live at CRS 2023, March 13 to 15, the Omni Hotel, where it goes down, Nashville, Tennessee. And we've got about 40 uh, interviews already locked in for the two and a half day period. It's going to be busy, 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 no doubt about it here. Uh, back yeah. here on the show, and I'm going to go right to an audience question because I love getting these. And feel free, you guys, I'm not the only one asking questions here uh, because we do have uh, the YouTube subscribers out there. And of course, Martin on the YouTube channel. Love this question. And we'll have Carly answer this. Um, I love that. Um, since you were once an actress, have you ever considered being a songwriter for movies and TV shows? Um, yeah, for sure. I think that I think that would be really cool. Um, I haven't I've haven't I've, mostly for the songs that I'm writing right now. I've been focusing on my own projects, so I haven't really been pitching them much for for anything else. But that's definitely something that I'd love to do in the future. Yeah, I love that. He, the tag. Perhaps you could be the next Celine Dion. Well, you know what? Uh, she's got a great voice and a great personality, great musician to go with it, too, with great guitar skills. So you never know here. We always say we make stars here on the Backstage Pass. I want to go back because <laughs> another listener, Kelsey, brings up a great point. I thought uh, the single uh, that you guys released last year, which was uh, Better Strangers, was a fantastic song. It was out there for a lot of people across the digital platforms can hear it. Uh, what was the idea behind this one? Give us the, the backstory. So... Um... Better Strangers actually was inspired originally by, I was reading Shakespeare, um, <laughs> and he said, I do desire that we may be better strangers. Um, and that was kind of something that I was feeling at the same time with someone that I just kind of wished that I could completely go back and erase ever having met them, ever having mm -hmm. even spoken to them. And I thought, man, that would make a really great song. So I actually wrote the chorus to it, like, within just like 30 seconds probably i made a voice memo and i was riding with my friend liz rose the next day so i brought her the chorus and she was like yeah let's write that and so we wrote it together the next day and yeah so that was better strangers take me through a little bit of your writing style and the creative process that comes with this to to write music tell me about you know carly's kind of style and how you like to write and 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 put your own creative process in into your music I think it's always different um, because a lot of my songs are inspired by something I went through or sometimes it's something my friends have gone through or something I've read. But I think a lot of times it will usually come to me as a melody. Um, and I have, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and record a melody into my phone and I'm constantly writing down titles and ideas in my phone. In fact, I will, sh this is like this. Oh, you can't see it. But anyways, it scrolls on and on and on the list of ideas I have in my phone. So I like to match up the ideas with the feel of the melody. And then if I'm writing it by myself, usually um, I don't write it in like four hours like we do in Nashville. <laughs> it takes me 
takes me a little more time to like really think it through and figure out exactly what I want to say. Um, but if I'm writing it with a co-writer, I'll bring in whatever I've put together before I go into the room. Um, and we kind of go from there, but yeah. I'm hearing a lot of that too. As you were speaking on that to piggyback on a little bit, the co-writing is becoming kind of that real, real thing now in, in Nashville too, because there are a tremendous amount of great songwriters. And I feel like a lot of the songwriters out there who don't sing in front of the microphone, people that just write the songs to, yeah. you know, put out there to be grabbed by somebody to record the songwriters deserve a lot of credit there in Nashville. Do you enjoy the co-writing process? Oh, I do. Yeah. Especially because now I feel like, I've really figured out my circle of people that I feel like really understand me and I really understand them. And I feel like that circle of people makes everything better. Um, and so I really appreciate having the opinions of other people or just the ideas. Like if I have a, an idea and they're like, well, I love that, but what if we add this to it? It's just nice to have other perspectives. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Talk about, uh, and I'm seeing this shift every year as we go by over the last, especially the last three, four, five years, uh, this shift in women's country now that you see, uh, and I'm just going to name a few here, Ashley McBride and Carly Pierce and uh, Ashley Cook and uh, Stephanie Quayle, next women of country, um, all these great artists that are doing their thing out there for uh, the, the women's side of it too, which once was, and I guess maybe still is partially a male dominated industry. What are some of the challenges you face being a female artist? And now it, isn't it great to see this shift go now kind of more female centered, if you will? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think everybody that you named is super talented. Um, and I mean, honestly, I can't say that I've really experienced challenges, I think, as a female. But, you know, I just kind of I, I think I came to Nashville when things were kind of shifting a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think that like for me, I think that for men and women, you have to work really hard um, to get there, regardless of your gender. And I think that's kind of what I focus on, I guess, is just working really hard, regardless of whether I'm, you know, male or female and thinking that, you know, that's what people take notice of eventually. So, yeah. Well, I know that in your, your dream, like everybody else, that center circle, that center circle called the Opry has got to be, or maybe has been, or maybe discussions when it comes to the future of stepping inside the kind of that ultimate, uh, platform of country music and uh almost kind of like the mount rushmore just getting inside a center circle for you is that a goal uh, moving forward oh uh, yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> no i would die i would absolutely die yeah for mm -hmm. sure i love that too and i could see that happening sooner than later no doubt hey let's yeah. back up for a couple of singles uh from last year i'm sure one of these you, you may play for us today uh tattoos i want to kind of go inside a little bit deeper and dig on that particular song tell us all about that one um, Tattoos is another song that I wrote with Brock Berry Hill, who also wrote Petty in the 80s. And, and then I wrote it with also Brett James, who I really, really admire as a songwriter. That one was, uh, it was interesting because we actually wrote that song shortly after the pandemic started. So we wrote it over Zoom, which was something I had never done before. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. that was definitely, that was definitely an adjustment um, that we got on, we got on Zoom and I had the title tattoos and the hook, like you're under my skin and my least favorite shade of blue. And mm -hmm. I never wanted tattoos. Um, and the guys liked it. Um, the song is basically just about how hard it is to erase the memories that you make with somebody and how they really do feel like permanent tattoos, whether you want them to be or not. Um, and so we wrote that one over Zoom and I recorded vocals for the first time on my computer by myself and we mm -hmm. made the demo and uh, we, we loved it. So, yeah. You got, like I said, one of those singles that hit home for me, no doubt. Let's go back to the audience here. Love the participation today. Thank you guys so much for joining us here. Gina uh, chimes in. You're shifted over to music. So remember you best as an actress. One of my favorite movies that you did, Amish Grace. And then she kind of follows it up with, uh, tell me about how you got involved in that movie and some of the memories you had doing it. Oh God, that's been so long ago. I don't even know if I remember doing it. <laughs> I was literally like, I was like eight years old. Um, this is kind of a hard question. I have the worst memory of those, <laughs> of those years. But I mean, I do remember it was fun. Kimberly Paisley was in it too, which was really cool. Cause of course, like I liked country music. So um, it was Brad Paisley's wife, um, which I thought was really cool. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't have any specific memories of mm -hmm. it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's, all, that's all good. Thank you, Gina, for uh, chiming in there with some questions there. Well, I know you got one more for us, and I do want to get into I thought it was a really cool thing on Apple Music, the lyric video uh, of Petty in the 80s, too. I thought that was a really cool video just to kind of watch, and you guys have done that uh, through a lot of the, the songs out there. You had one that was uh, uh, Petty in the 80s live from Nashville, uh, which was this, this year. They put up a music video yeah. of that, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Heavenly, another great song there. Is that the one we're going to hear, Heavenly? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, let's let's do it. It's all yours. Okay. I got some scars. Yeah, I've been through hell and back. I've had broken trust and paper cuts, but you made me forget all that. All I hear is quiet saying, Can't help thinking you were made for me. All I see is everything ever gone in me. You make all my demons wanna say hello. Make the devil in me wish he was an angel. You bang you make me feel happy Thank God he gave me you Cause you turn my sad songs into hallelujahs Yeah, you bang out the best in me Yeah, you make me feel happy mm -hmm. And baby, my broken road You paved it all in gold like I close my eyes, woke up in paradise And I think you say my soul All I know is I believe in Something bigger than just you and me And someone new that we were meant to be You make all my demons want to be low Make the devil in me wish he was an angel You bring out the best in me Yeah, you make me feel heaven Turn my sad songs into hallelujahs. Yeah, you bring out the best in me. Yeah, you make me feel song she's put out and there's a whole lot more i'm sure coming up here in uh, 2023 so let's uh break that one down uh it feels good it just feels country it feels a little bit of everything across <laughs> different genres of music uh i love it tell us all about heavenly how it came how it came to be um so heavenly i was getting ready to play at the listening room um mm -hmm. and i had the idea for the chorus um and so i I sat in the back seat of my Jeep uh, with my guitar and made a voice memo of the chorus in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And um, I had my second ever write with Nathan Chapman, who is like one of my favorite collaborators on the planet. I really, really, really admire his writing. Um, and so I brought the chorus in to Nathan um, and we wrote it together um, and we had a lot of fun. And actually the demo sounds a little more, pop kind of mm -hmm. um then it ended up turning out in the studio but when we recorded it, i told the guitar player i wanted it to be country meets pantera meets glitter <laughs> 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 and so so that's kind of that's what we went for um and this is this is one of my favorite songs still and it's one of my favorite songs to play live um and yeah i love that one 
I love that too. We go back to the audience here. Martin chimes in. Great question here. Love this one. Uh, classical music. Okay. Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Vivaldi. I like that. Okay. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge, I don't like get in my car and listen to classical music, but I can, I can appreciate it for sure. I like that. Okay. And I love your uh, video. Uh, subscribe. Love this Apple music. Love to watch different things. The lyric video, take me through the, the making there, Petty in the eighties. And of course uh, you guys did another version of it live from Nashville. How much yeah. fun was it to shoot that? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Um, the lyric video. Well, obviously I was, I was not alive in the eighties. So <laughs> I asked, I asked pretty much everyone I know that was like, over 45 like mm -hmm. what was popular in the 80s and so like my team and i were texting each other paragraphs of stuff that was cool in the 80s and so um the team at sony did a really great job putting it together it's one of my favorite lyric videos i think it's a lot of fun um and the live video uh it was it was a lot of fun i really love the band and i think they're a lot of fun and they did a great job and um and i was excited to put that out because i haven't put out like a professional live video yet in the past it's of course usually just mm -hmm. like a self mm -hmm. so yeah i was excited to put it out for sure now tell us about you know this new year and of course we're just now what a couple of months into it here a uh, long way to go you know to get to december to finish off you guys are riding uh petty in the 80s very high now for the single but i know one thing about musicians and doing this for the last four years they never rest on their laurels there's always something coming out next for uh, music EP, a few singles come out and lead to an EP or more singles come out to keep the audience kind of right there uh, on that cliffhanger and wanting more. What are you most excited about for 2023 in, in, in your camp? Well, right now I'm actually, I am, I'm in the studio right now with Dan Huff, um, who is a mm -hmm. producer mm -hmm. that I've really always admired. I think he's awesome. So I guess right now I'm most excited about getting those songs finished because I really love them and we've been having a lot of fun. So once they're finished, I'm excited to get those out and for people to hear them um, and hopefully playing live more. Cause that's like, I mean, of course, I think it's kind of everybody's mm -hmm. favorite part of this career, just getting to meet people and see them in person. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that hopefully. Um, but definitely the new music. Yeah. That, I definitely looking forward to that too. Like I said, anything like the ones we've talked about today, I know there's just more great songs ready to kind of burst on the scene out there too. And you think this will lead to, to a full length, uh, maybe EP down, down the stretch somewhere. Hopefully. Yeah. That's all. That's, yeah, that's, all, <laughs> that's always the goal for sure. Yeah. No doubt. I love that too. Uh, well, I tell you, Martin, I was going to do rapid fire coming up here in just a second too, but I'll go ahead and pull one. Uh, yeah, Kelsey said she wasn't born in the 80s either. <laughs> Tell that story there here on the uh, column coming in. Uh, Martin says uh, some of your favorite movies, uh, not counting the ones you – okay, that's a good question. I like that. Um, Favorite movies. Um, I really love Almost Famous. That's probably mm -hmm. my favorite movie. Um, I've seen that one a lot. Um. I let's see what else do I love? Oh, I love the Doors movie. I think that one's awesome. Mm -hmm. My dad raised me loving the Doors, like the one with the with Val Kilmer that movie. I think mm -hmm. that one's really cool. I've seen that one a few times. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think of a top three. What another one would be? Well, let's stick with those two. Those are good. Yeah, All right. I like those two. Dude. We'll take uh, one quick tab out. Come back. We'll do some more rapid fire. He took one of the questions out of my mouth there, but we'll do more uh, food and stuff like that. Drinks, all that kind of stuff. Favorite stuff out there. And of course, uh, you know, get to uh, some fun stuff in rapid fire as we always do here on the uh, backstage pass. One more time out for our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, our friends also at Honky Tonk, Texas. And of course, uh, Gentle Ben Spirits, all three presenting sponsors of CRS 2023 will be there live at the Omni broadcasting live through Facebook, YouTube, and all the other things out there. Uh, interviewing Nashville's best and brightest at CRS 2023. That is Country Radio Seminar, if you're not really good with the acronym out there, too. Here are all the uh, backstage pass. Yours truly, Kirsty Krause and CJ Garten. All there in the uh, media, like I said, back there at the Omni Hotel, CRS 2023. We'll come back. Time out for our sponsors here. It is the uh, backstage pass. More with Carly here. And rapid fire coming up. Hang tight. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Kraus, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Had a couple of great shows lined up to finish out the uh, week. A couple of guys you may be familiar with. Uh, Travis Denning coming on tomorrow night with us here on the Backstage Pass. And our friend, Texas country artist Aaron Watson will finish out the week here as we put them out over the weekend. Get ready for a big show Sunday at the Houston Rodeo down here, the Zach Brown Band. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun out there, too. I can't wait to uh, see where I'm sitting. That's always the fun when you go to live shows and you get uh, all your stuff worked out and everything. You get to be the guest of a great artist like Zach Brown. You get to sit down there and have a good time and it's actually my daughter's first rodeo so i'm looking forward to that being her first kind of like her first concert a real concert carly so this is going to be a lot of fun and oh that's awesome i've been wanting to go <laughs> to a rodeo too i haven't been to one either like a real rodeo mm-hmm. so that's awesome that's going to be fun Look, i'm looking forward to it like the rides she may not like the rides so much but i've got like all the tickets bought wristband that kind of thing for the rides but if she gets in there and she sees all the mutton bustings chuck wagon races and all the barrel racing and the the bull riding she she loves animals so she may get uh attracted to that pretty pretty close and then of course yeah. zach brown i've seen a couple times live it's yeah you, you go off just your jaw drops and it, it just it says uh yeah they've been around a long time so yeah, he's, <laughs> he's good live what's that i said or they're very talented <laughs> they're yes and also I, I was gonna say speaking of females uh talented female i'm gonna throw some props out there too because i've seen her uh the, lately she's done very well caroline jones she's actually in his band and uh, a tremendous fiddle player slash mandolin slash guitar. So another talented female who's also got her own solo career, but is in um, Zach's band too. So look forward to seeing her uh, this weekend. All right, rapid fire. Again, the singles Petty in the 80s. And you can check her out at carlyscottcollins.com out there for all the latest. And give her a like on social media if you haven't already. And check out the other songs that we have talked about today. Download the single and stream it out there across all the digital platforms. Uh, favorite food, favorite thing to do that is non-music, some hobbies you get into. Favorite food, um, pizza, but homemade pizza. My mom and I make the dough from scratch. We make the sauce from scratch. We grow the peppers that we put on it. And it is, I, you've never Ooh, tasted God. anything better, I promise. Um, okay. So that's my favorite food. Um, and favorite thing to do besides music. There's a lot, um, but gardening is something that I like recently discovered that I do really, really enjoy. Oh, um, yeah. And then, yeah, and probably reading also. Because I read, I try to read like 25 pages every single day of some book. I love to read so okay yeah. any uh any favorite read right now going on favorite book right now my favorite book like of all time is probably the crossing by cormac mccarthy or um maybe like lonesome dove uh, larry Ooh. mcmurtry um yeah. i love i love those i love the cowboys <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah the book i'm reading right now is um it's called midnight's children it's by salman rushdie so it's a long one. I want to check that one out too. When it yeah. comes to, I know for me, I'm getting into these uh, TV shows now. I mean, I try to watch a little bit of everything, like not so much reality TV, but I like a series, documentaries, mm-hmm. mysteries, things like that. What do you get into when you like to binge watch something? Oh man, my favorite TV show of all time is probably Breaking Bad. Um, I I, know. <laughs> right um, I loved that one. Um, I loved Sons of Anarchy. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, and we recently, we've, we've been watching 1923, you know, the Yellowstone spinoff. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. It's it's so good. It's sad, though, but it's good. It's sad. I need to yeah. check that out, no doubt. All right. I, I love this one, too. Uh, let's say Carly had won a, a big lottery over the next few years. I don't know, Powerball, Mega Millions. If Carly won it, what's the first thing she'd do with the money? Um, Probably get a private plane so I could take my dog with me everywhere I went. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What kind of dog you got? I have a French bulldog. All right. <laughs> Probably play with uh and there you and like you said, you just play all over the country, headline your own tour, and it would be yep. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> I love that too. I'll see if we'll do one more dessert. I don't know, ice cream. What do you like to I guess sweets? What do you like to get into? You know, I actually don't I barely ever eat sweets. I'm not a huge sweets fan, but I do love a plain vanilla ice cream with like so many sprinkles that you can't even see the ice cream. That's like, <laughs> if I'm going to eat dessert, it's going to be that. 
I love yeah. how you described that. You put a metal picture right in my head, just like a good song yeah. does, no doubt. <laughs> uh, this may take a little thought. It may not. Uh, title of the first song you ever wrote. Oh, um, I think it was called Solid Ground. And okay. I, yeah, no, I'm not going to tell you any of the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, people don't remember the title. What was, what was the song about? Okay, what was it? What was it about? What was it describing? You know, I was like 12 and it oh, was God. like a song about an unsteady relationship that I was not having. It was definitely all, I was like, well, this would be a cool song idea, even though I've never experienced this in my life. Um, so that was what it was about. It was like, I need to be on solid ground. <laughs> Well, you know what? I've come a long way since then, too, no doubt. And that's why most people say we'll never pull it out of the archives. We'll leave that where it is and leave it to stick. And uh, right. we'll continue to write our great music out there, which you've done with the singles we've talked about today. And I think it's a the song hit me when I first had heard it. And definitely, I'm sure it's sticking with a lot of people out there because it is a great uh, single. Came out there uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Petty in the 80s. She's one of the up and comers there in Nashville, set to blossom in 23 and for many years uh, moving forward, give her a follow on the uh, social media out there and visit the website, carlyscottcollins.com uh, to go get Petty in the 80s across all the uh, digital platforms. Hey, I appreciate the time. If we happen to run into each other in Nashville, I'll just will wave my hand and say hello. Uh, thanks for everything. I uh, appreciate you joining us today. Hope you had a great time. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice to meet you. Good, good to be there. No doubt about it. Great to meet you too as well. Uh, tomorrow, Travis Denning. I don't know what time. We'll just have a, a feature interview with Travis, talk about some new music coming out uh, this Friday. And also our good friend Aaron Watson will come by uh, this week on Friday. We'll talk about that more over the next couple of days leading into CRS 2023 here from all of us here at the Backstage Pass presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, Hockey Talk Texas, and Gentle Ben Spirits. We'll see you guys Tomorrow with Travis Denning on the show. Until then, take care and have a, a terrific night. We'll see you soon.